Değerli misafirlerimiz. Değerli misafirlerimiz. Hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Öncelikle e, yoğun iş temponuzla vakit ayırıp katılım sağladığınız için teşekkürü siz müşterilerimize borç biliriz. E, ayrıca Orta Doğu ve Afrika'nın çeşitli ülkelerinden katılan distribütörlerimize de teşekkürlerimizi iletmek isteriz. E, bugün ki programımızla ilgili bilgi vermek isterim ajandamızla ilgili. Programımız iki kısımdan oluşacaktır. Ee, i̇lk olarak bazı ürün ve hizmetlerimizin sunulacağı e, sunumlar olacaktır. Akabinde e, kudele kesme törenimiz gerçekleşecektir. Peşine öğle yemeğim yapılacak ve Akabinde de ikinci kısma geçilecektir. İkinci kısımda yine e, konusunda uzman kişilerin yapacağı teknik sunumlarla birlikte e, peşinde rehber eşliğinde bir workshop turumuz olacaktır. Tekrar teşekkür ederim. Günaydın. Welcome to all our customers in Turkey who have taken the time out from their busy work schedules to be with us today. We truly appreciate your support. We would also like to welcome our distributors in the region who have flown over all over Af Middle East and Africa to partake in the celebrations today. We have two programs today. One is the ribbon cutting ceremony, followed by a technology day, wherein our experts will be talking about key products and services, post which we will have lunch. After lunch, we will have the market stalls for selected products that are relevant to our customers in Turkey. We will conclude the event by a guided tour of the workshop. Thank you once again for joining us and we look forward to the rest of the event.
check. Good morning, everyone. May I kindly request everybody to please be seated. The ceremony is going to now begin. Good morning, everyone. May I please request everyone to have a seat. The program is going to commence. May I please request everyone to have a seat. Değerli misafirlerimiz, serüvenimiz başlayacaktır. Lütfen yerlerimize geçelim. Good morning once again and a very warm welcome to everybody who is present here. We would like to welcome all our customers in Turkey who have taken the time out to be present here today. We truly appreciate your support. We also would like to welcome all our distributors who have flown across from the Middle East and Africa to partake in the celebrations today. I would like to now invite on stage Mr. Harsha Rao, our regional unit leader, Mia, to say a few words. Gunaydin, Hosh Geldinis. Good morning. A warm welcome to all of you to this event. Today is a momentous one for us with the inauguration of a new workshop in Kemal Pasha. Turkey was, is and will remain an important market for Habiga. We entered the market in Turkey back in 2011 with a small sales office and in 2013 we took up a workshop space in Istanbul, in Dudulu and it was primarily for repair of compressor valves. With this move, we graduated from being a parts provider to a service provider to our key customers in Turkey. With closeness to our customers, we have established ourselves as a market leader in Turkey and a preferred vendor for our customers. Over the years, we have slowly and steadily built our capabilities to support our customers in the country. With the increase in population of hydrocom stepless capacity control systems for a reciprocating compressor in the country for energy saving, we address the customer need of quick repair turnaround of actuator repair by installing the relevant machines and tools. We appointed sales engineers in Ankara, Istanbul, and Izmir to provide local and fast response support to our customers. We then reinforced the team by appointing a dedicated field service technician for troubleshooting and to support the turn on activities for compressor overhauling and commissioning. Our strategy of establishing a facility capable of repairing the complete compressor based on customer demand led us to explore the possibility of being even closer to our key customers in Izmir. With the largest, Izmir has the largest fleet of reciprocating compressors in the country. The result is for all of you to see today. With the relocation to a bigger premises and launching of the packing assembly repair, 
and snapshot monitoring services. We aim to satisfy the customer needs of increasing availability and reliability of their critical compressors. Our plan includes a laydown area for compressor repair, this space, <coughs> tools and tackles to facilitate in-house compressor and large component repair within a short turnaround time. The facility is large enough, as you can see, to host Hobbiger Academy training program, complementing as a feeder to our overall schools in Jubail Training Center, which is our regional training center. And also Vienna, uh, Melbourne, Laporte in te uh, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my team in Turkey, the MIA region and Horbiger, I thank you for being with us in a success so far and here at the grand opening of a new facility. I promise you, this is only the beginning. Teşekkür ederim. I would now invite our CSO, Head of Sales and Marketing, Mr. Rafael Bakar, to say a few words. Good morning. It is with great, great pre uh, pleasure and pride that we gather today here to inaugurate our new compressor facility. This investment underlines our commitment in serving with the highest quality of service and support for, our, for your compressor needs. Being it compressor service or components for new built compressors. I believe that compressor service is not just about fixing machinery. It is about building relationships, creating trust, and delivering first-class service and engineering su support that surpasses your expectations. At Herbiger, we understand the critical role of compressors that play in your operation. And we recognize the importance of ensuring their optimal performance. Our commitment to excellence is what sets us apart in this competitive in industry. I would like to use this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for, en for entrusting us with your compressor service requirements or sourcing Herbiger technology products for your new built air and industrial compressors. We look forward to growing and strengthening our relationship with you through the top-notch service and maintenance or maintenance or troubleshooting or providing local inventory for fast delivery of your components. Today, you will have the opportunity to explore at our market stalls hosted by our industry experts, our performance defining products and offerings. Please feel free to give us feedback because actually we want to hear the voice of the customer. Your feedback has value to us because this will help us to innovate the next generation of our products and technology. I'm extremely proud of what the team has achieved, and I'm looking forward to a great future in Turkey. Thank you. I would like to invite Wolfgang Sauter, our CEO of Compressor Technology, and also a member of the board of the executive board of Herbiger. Good morning, or service, as we say in Austria. <clears throat> it's a great honor for me, and uh, I'm really delighted to be able to participate in the inauguration of this new compressor repair workshop today. This is another milestone in our localization strategy. And I also want to say thank you to, to the team here who has done a great work 
through the last years to serve our customers and to build up this market to what it is today. I can also underline that the Herbiger Executive Board is fully supporting our localization efforts and looks very positive into the future when it comes to Turkey. Our global footprint strategy called One Plant, One Region and Local for Local, together with the local service center and uh, distribution logistic hubs, like the ones we're inaugurating today here, ensures that we can support our customers at the highest service levels. And at the same time, it ensures that we can maintain and expand our number one position when it comes to reciprocating compressor service and to high performance components for compressors. <clears throat> Such a local footprint <clears throat> also brings strategic advantages when we look at our innovation, like for example our hydrogen compression package. <clears throat> we have, uh, which, is, which is used for uh, hydrogen filling stations as well as for trailer filling. We have recently launched our hydrogen compression package, which is unmatched in total cost of ownership and sets benchmark in terms of reliability. And when this comes into the market, we're now able to serve it locally in the country. At Herbiger, we have a vision. Our vision is to enable change for better tomorrow. And here, our compressor emission products play a significant role in the carbon footprint deduction initiative globally. We're supporting our customers here in Turkey on their journey and offer a zero emission program from assessing and quantifying the carbon reduction potential up to implementation and improvement programs. And finally ending in helping you to maintain a zero carbon operation. And it's not only about products at Herbiger, it's also about people. Our global network of training centers and training experts will add value in enabling inter internal and also external organizations to make the necessary changes for a better tomorrow. Making our customers more competitive, more reliable, more efficient, and most important, more environmentally friendly, is our ultimate goal. At this location, we can offer our comprehensive training program called IQ, Industry Qualification, a truly compressor brand independent training program. We are committed to contribute to the bright future of your business in Turkey, and we're extremely proud to be part of this journey. Thank you very much. Now I would like to ask my colleagues up on stage to officially inaugurate the facility with the ribbon cutting.
The first presentation of the day is on REE solutions by Mr. Dmitry Moskolenko. All right, good. Good morning. Uh, since I'm first uh, with this device, can you hear me? OK, good. Pleasure to see you here. Uh, my name is Dimitri Moskalenka. I'm RE Solutions Manager for Hubiga Middle East. Uh, the presentation is about RE assessment program solutions. Uh, I hope you will enjoy. So. Basically, uh, here's an overview of products and services which our company is uh, providing. You see many components of the compressor we manufacturing, like valves, of course, packings, uh, check valves, safety devices. Uh, as well, we have a lot of services. Field service, engineering studies, upgrades, repair services, which is this facility is about, uh, and customer trainings, which my colleagues explained. Uh, a part of physical products and services, we have cloud-based services. So services which are possible because of our uh, database, of our knowledge, since we are an industry for many, many years, and we have a uh, very nice and big database of compressors worldwide, which is uh, maintained by my, myself, my colleagues in any regions, uh, constantly and instantly, so we can do analytics based on this uh, database. We do fleet overviews, means they're ranging an overview of uh, different compressor fleets. We generate workshop repair reports out of goods which are coming to our workshop and going out. Uh, we do service analytics. What is this? Service analytics is a reports how many, how often you repair your parts what can be done to improve the lifetime of uh, equipment based on their repair service analytics. Then we give different recommendations. We can set up KPIs. We, in some countries, we are running performance-based contracts when the customer says, okay, my KPI is that MTBF, mean time between failure, or that running time, and we are performing it. And we do standard reporting, which is supporting the reporting of customers. So this kind of services is uh, our future. It's our actually actual uh, services, but we focus in the future very much on these services. Uh, my colleagues will explain more. Uh, I will start with RE process, which is uh, reliability, efficiency, and environmental uh, soundness uh, inspection. So this program is helping you to judge your compressors uh, against the uh, as I said, uh, database which is existing, and you can see how your compressor is performing in comparison to industry best standards in terms of reliability, efficiency, and environmental impacts. So suppose this is a refinery, you have different locations for the compressors, and there is an index which is showing you where your compressor is standing where. Uh, we do some studies. Uh, so there are compressor criticality and the number of compressors installed. So depending on the process, uh, like conversion or treatment, we can say if this compressor is backed up or it's very, so no critical machine, or if this compressor is very critical, and that's very important for you. So these kind of analytics we can do. And then as an outcome of their uh, analysis, we can give you the example of uh, your fleet. So this is actually the summary, what our customers receives and the reports. Compressor tax, then you see the OPEX. OPEX operational expenditure, right? So how much does it cost to operate this compressor? Uh, this is first, first bar chart is ranging. Uh, lower bar chart is a savings potential. What does it mean? 
Everyone knows that K, the first compressor, is a bad actor. There's a most critical compressor on the refinery, but there is no need to invest to him any longer because everything which could be done, already done. There are other compressors with savings potential. So investing to these compressors, you can significantly, you can significantly decrease your operational expenditure and we show for how much you can save for which compressor tax. And this we do by analyzing fleet and by analyzing existing documentation, process transfers, quite sophisticated tools behind this. But we can give you prognosis. We can give it to you in advance, which is, to my point of view, very, very interesting things to, uh, very interesting insights. And please uh, notice that there is no technical things. It's all about the ROI and uh, lowering the operational expenditure. Technical things we discuss, but later on, when we go for the projects, when we go to deep, uh, deep technical discussions. So this is, this is a fleet assessment example. Uh, as you may see here, so except of efficiency, the energy efficiency, there is also environmental efficiency, which we also calculate. So this is bring me, this brings me to the second slide, uh, where within this program, uh, we can assess the environmental impact of the compressor, emissions from scope one, scope two, scope three. So actually all sources of emissions we can access, we can quantify, and we can show you what is the priority. Does it make sense to improve something with this compressor or we better go to another compressor? And out of this uh, assessment, we can create action plans like emission reduction, emission uh, audits, em emission reduction, and finally, as an ultimate goal, is a net zero operation, which is one of the value of our company, reduce emissions. Now case studies, maybe not so much theory, but some practical cases. I selected some uh, interesting examples from the area. So that much RE audits and that much Audi reports, my colleagues and myself performed in the past for two brush group. Uh, so this, these are documents, but what is the result of using these documents? So many compressors have been improved with control system called Hydrocom. Uh, and the customers, they could keep uh, their energy savings at very nice level. So many energy has been saved by using the Hydrocom system. But identification of this Hydrocom system, the justification of these systems has been done through audit process. A little bit more technical, same project. So if you see this drop here is a, how much energy drops after you use Hydrocom. That's for a particular application, but of course we have for individual compressor, for each individual project, we have uh, this uh, information as well. So system is really saving you energy. Second project, also for Turkey, for Star Refinery, we recently received the order. This is trend analysis. So basically, uh, we receive trends from customer. We process it, these trends in our system, and we could identify what is the real load of this compressor. And once we identify the load of this compressor, we could come up with such figures, which is very convincing and uh, sane uh, for, for themselves. So that's much energy uh, they could uh, save if they would have Hydrocom installed one year before. Uh, same case, again, trend analysis for our customer in Qatar. So these are operational trends, real operational trends of the customer. 
uh, and you see that the compressor lo load is varying. We analyzed, we defined the typical load of this compressor, and again, we come up with the same, uh, we, we, with such uh, savings for these compressors. So that is the power and the beauty of RE fleet assessment program and the tools which we are having and the knowledge which we have. And we would like to use these tools and knowledge for your service. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dimitri. The next presentation is on field service by Mr. Pavan Gandhi. Hello. Hi, good morning. I'm Pavan Gandhi. I take care of field service and project management. Okay. Uh, in the region. I'll just show a quick presentation about field service capabilities. Uh, this is the field service team what we have in the region of Middle East and Africa. So you can see like we have 14 service engineers in the region in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Kuwait, Saudi East, Saudi West, in Qatar, in Turkey, in South Africa. So basically uh, the team of uh, 14 engineers plus five technicians we have, which is quite close to the, cu the customer. That is in line with the Horbiger principle of closeness to the customer. So we are just a call away from you. Any support you need, you just call, we'll mobilize a customer, uh, field service engineer immediately. So we are doing almost uh, 800 compressor overalls till now. 14 service engineers with the qualified uh, skills. Uh, we have a local engineering support which is backed up with the Vienna engineering support for any troubleshooting related issues. We have a pre-qualified manpower suppliers for any supports required for helpers, riggers, fitters, crane operators. And uh, we do engine uh, overhauling also. We, have, we are the channel partner for Waukesha engine also. These are the product and services we offer, basically. So we, we are the added value reseller for Bentley Nevada and Neo Pinone also. We have our Neo Pinone partner also with us today. Uh, we have performance refining product with uh, high reliability and efficiency. We have on-site as well as in-house overhauling capabilities. And this area is dedicated for the in-house uh, overhauling of the compressors. Then condition monitoring, snapshot monitoring. Uh, we have a few slides later on for this. Upgrade and revamps we are doing to add the value to the customer. Uh, we, have, we are doing the engineering products and RE audit as my friend Dimitri has mentioned now. We have combined experience of more than 200 uh, years of field service with our team. We are doing uh, overhauling of all the major brands of the compressor. So we are not restricted with any of the brand of the compressor. We can pro uh, provide a service for all the brands of the uh, compressors. Uh, we are giving continuous training to our field service engineers for safety, uh, Baker Hughes Neopinone training, aerial training, Wokesha, laser alignment, snapshot monitoring, and safety training like Bosuit for offshore services. So you can see a snapshot services and certificates of our, some samples of service engineers. For on-site uh, compressor service, uh, we are quite flexible and we can mobilize our manpower immediately. Uh, we can do the shift of eight, 12, around the clock. And uh, at the same time, like we can provide our qualified service engineer and the manpower. So recently we completed our overall in Saudi with a team of 32 people, with the complete crew, with our supervisor and technicians, and then support manpower from outside companies. Uh, we can provide snapshot services, snapshot monitoring services, and we have quite a standardized global document for keeping uh, the reports and uh, records for the future overall. Uh, we have a lot of tools 
to check uh, the quality of all the parts and we check each and every parts uh, during the overhauling. These are some of the samples of our quality reports which we uh, keep in record and we take all the dimensions as a received condition or as open condition and then during the assembly time just to check the comparison on that. Uh, this is the in-house capabilities we have. When the compressor is coming to our overhauling facility, we open it, we inspect it, each and every parts we have a very strict quality control. Uh, at the same time, our workshop is equipped with valve repair, packing repair, cylinder repair. We can manufacture jigs and fixtures for the assembly and we can manufacture a lot of components which we can see in the case studies later on. So for the compressor, we can do like a complete turnkey activity. Uh, this is our Saudi training center which we opened last year. So here we are giving training, practical hands-on training to the customer. You can see these are the 24 modules of the training. The, so theoretical classes are with, uh, with the 24 modules. At the same time, we have a compressor in our facility in Saudi where the customer can have a hands-on experience. So similarly, we have a training center, five training center globally. So in the region, it is available in Saudi. You can take use of that. Uh, we'll just uh, go through quick uh, case studies just to see the capabilities. Uh, uh, recently, we overall uh, Saudi compressor, for they had a capacity increase requirement on one side, like a 30% capacity increase in recycle side and 20% uh, capacity decrease on the other side of the makeup. So we did a full case study, full engineering study. Uh, we did RE audit in 2016 and then we implemented the solution. Compressor came to our facility in Dubai. We manufactured a new cylinder, uh, new crankshaft connecting rod, new piston, new valves, rings, packings. And then the compressor was installed in, uh, on, on site on 2017. Initially, they had so many reliability issues with this machine, having empty BM, mean time between maintenance of two to, two to three months. And from last five years, the compressor is running without any issues. You can see uh, the new cylinder is coming with Horbiger nameplate. So basically it is completely Horbigerized compressor with the upgraded parts. For this particular compressor, we did uh, the study. Uh, it is same study which is required to manufacture a new compressor. Rod load studies, balancing studies. Then we did the FE analysis for the new, new cylinder. We did the testing. All the components, uh, we did the entity testing. And after passing the entity testing only, we started the assembly. This is the compressor we assembled. And you can see on site with Horbiger logo. So this, is, this was the first compressor assembled in 2017. And uh, actually last week, we did the assembly of second compressor in Dubai with the added products of new lubrication system new cylinder, new pistons, and you can see all the new components. So except the frame and distance piece, all other components we manufacture and we assemble. So it is not only we increase the capacity, we increase the performance of the compressor also in terms of reliability, efficiency, and environmental soundness. Second case study is from Egypt. Again, it is for the in-house compressor where they had two legacy compressors. It's Worthington dresser and compressor having one compressor crack on the crankcase side, other uh, compressor having crack on the cylinder side. So one by one compressor came to Dubai workshop and uh, we manufactured uh, the new components, new cylinder, new crankcase and all the internal parts. So combined together, it was like a building of a new complete compressor with all our upgraded parts. So I'll just show like how the compressor came to our workshop, which a uh, lot of leakages and uh, very low reliability products. Uh, and typical, this is a vacuum compressor. So uh, if any air ingress is there in this compressor, final product will get affected. And this is how we build the compressor uh, with all our performance defining parts. And once we install it, actually customer gave a feedback like their product quality has gone quite uh, high 
uh, in terms of the requirement. So coming to the compressor and maintenance strategies, typically we have three strategies, like customer has three strategies, run to failure, like compressor is running until something is getting failed and then intervention is there. Then preventive or planned maintenance system, like 8,000, 12,000, 16,000 hours of maintenance. And condition-based maintenance, like uh, having online monitoring uh, system. And based on the performance of the system, they will take the compressor for maintenance. We can support you in all the maintenance strategies. And additionally, for condition monitoring, we can support you with the snapshot monitoring services. So you can see like uh, there are two types of compressors on the cylinder side in lubrication uh, is there and other is like non-lubricated compressors. So this side, clean lubricated application, these are quite reliable compressors because there is no dirt and it's the lubrication is there on cylinders and packings. But on the left side, non-loop dirty services, they are the most challenging compressors where there's no lubrication, a lot of dirt is coming, and then the uh, MTBM is only one to six months. So we have our own product and services. We can support you for all the applications here. These are the levels of maintenance. Uh, we can, we can uh, uh, provide our services, like only for component, then wear parts like rings, packings, bearings, then cylinder repair and uh, for the full, complete, major overhauling of the services. Uh, now we'll just show about a few slides uh, of snapshot monitoring. Snapshot monitoring is like uh, health checking of the compressors uh, to check the performance, as well as we use these services for troubleshooting. If you have any issues with the compressor, a specific problem, we hook on our unit to the compressor we collect a lot of data and then our experts, they analyze the report and they give a full-fledged report with the solutions. So typical compressor problems are like valve leakages, ring leakages, bearing problem, packing leakage, foundation issues, which is quite neglected. Uh, again, discharge valve issues, pulsation issues are there. So mainly the principles of monitoring is uh, we can measure the cylinder indicator pressures, vibration, ultrasonics, temperature, and uh, in few cases, uh, rod drop. With all these uh, parameters and getting the data of that, combined we need to analyze all this uh, data to see like what could be the possible reason of uh, failure. So this is our portable analyzer where we hook in all the sensors uh, to the compressor, we collect the data, and then this data is getting analyzed to give you the best reports. So like first is pressure measurement, cylinder uh, pressure like on the crank end side and on the head end side, we tap uh, the cylinders like, and from that tapping, we take the pressure data. So which gives the information about thermodynamic characteristics of the cylinders leakages of valve packings, rings, valve dynamics, losses, pulsations, and capacity and power issues. Similarly, for vibrations, a uh, lot of looseness or any issues are there. So vibration data will get collected. Ultrasonics, hearing the noise inside the cylinders, what is happening. Temperature. And this is the software to analyze the data. So report will come, a full-fledged report will come uh, with all the data, all the justification, and then the probable uh, causes and recommendations. So what we need in this case is compressor data sheet, compressor layout, gas composition. Sometimes for critical uh, troubleshooting, we need the weights of the parts to check the rod load reversal, rod load uh, calculations, and then the cylinder clearances. So most of the data will be collected by our field service engineer when we are mobilizing him on site. We need your support to get all this data during troubleshooting. This is the first case of uh, leaking uh, valve seat. You can see the seat is completely damaged and that is how the sealing element, valve ring is not getting uh, sealed properly. So you can see here the ultrasonic data, it is getting opened. So that is one of the reasons like we can see that why it is leaking and uh, with the graph 
by comparing with the standard graph, we can see, okay, this could be the probable reason of getting valve failure. Second is about leaking crank end uh, side suction valve. Again, you can see this graph is getting open. Uh, that means like valve is getting open for a long time and which is causing issues with the performance, with the temperature and loss in the capacity. Uh, then about ultrasonic, because of the, some looseness in cross-head side, you can get some impact. And that impact will is getting detected here. So with combined with all these parameters, uh, our expert, uh, they give a complete a comprehensive report for supporting you for troubleshooting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pavan. We will now have a 10-minute break, and if I can request that we all collect back in 10 minutes from now. Thank you.
This is my.
Ladies and gentlemen, may I request everyone to please be seated to commence the next session of our day. May I please request everyone to be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention. Can I request everyone to please be seated so we can continue the rest of the session? Ladies and gentlemen, may I please request everyone to be seated so the next session can commence. The next presentation today is on digitalization and Vistra by Mr. Abdul Rahman Hawass. Good morning. We have a very interesting session, I can say. Need your full attention, please, with this. My name is Abdurrahman Hawass. I'm the sales manager for Pakistan, Jordan, Sudan, Oman, and a group of countries in the Middle East and Africa. And I'm taking care of business development for digital solutions and pre -decom. So our digital solutions in Orbigar are targeting three main areas. First area is the equipment monitoring and analytics. Second area is the component repair solution. Third area is modernization and fleet development solution. This is what Dimitri explained in the first session. What we are trying to do with our digital solutions, we are trying to give a better customer experience when dealing with Horbiger. We are trying to make things smart. We are trying to make their quick, quick response and you have control of every detail of the process from sending the repair parts to our workshop till you get your parts repaired and you deliver it to your stores. What we will discuss in this presentation is about the first two areas. The first area we will discuss is the component repair solution. We have a ready product. We call it Vistra. It's already in the market. We started to do this in the US.
thing from two, three years average. Now we are pursuing this product in the, in the area here. The second product we will talk about is the Predecom, which is the equipment monitoring analytics solution area. It's still under development. In this presentation, I will give you a glimpse how it's feel and look in the next slides. And then we can take the, uh, on the pilot request. We are doing a pilot request field trials in the areas. So I will give you a glimpse of how it looks and feel. Vistra. Vistra is a software as a service, a SaaS model. It's targeting, as we said, the repair process. We try to make it digitalized. Why do we need to make it digitalized? We make it digitalized to have full transparency of three main areas. Before we get to that, let's have a look on this video. We're working 40 compression packages. They are quite maintenance intensive, and sometimes it's hard to know if the right spare parts are available on inventory, if those spare parts are in good condition, or if they are still out for repair. Above all, Mike has to make sure that his service mechanics perform the maintenance in a timely manner and install the right parts. But luckily, Mike and his field mechanics have started to use Vistra. Bob, Mike's field mechanic, has started a maintenance by selecting a unit from his unit list. He picks required parts from the equipment configuration by hitting the scan button. Then he goes to the indicated shelf location and checks out his parts from the inventory by scanning the QR code on the box. He jumps into his truck and drives out to the field. He changes parts in the unit and documents the maintenance he has done in the app. The worn parts taken out from the unit will be moved to the return list and can be scanned into a shipment for Horbiger. Meanwhile, Mike opens the Vistra web portal in his office and recognizes that Bob has already finished the maintenance on this unit. Besides, Vistra shows the updated maintenance history and displays all exchanged parts. Mike recognizes from the repair history of this unit in Vistra that the mean time between repair is only 4,000 hours. He flags the unit as a bad actor. Horbiger receives Mike's parts, repairs them, and uploads a full repair report to Vistra. In addition, because Mike has flagged this unit, Horbiger engineers suggest improved parts as an upgrade. A few days later, Mike receives the repaired parts and puts them back on stock. He is curious to see whether the processing time of part repair has improved with Vistra. Oh, great! It was 20% faster than last time. Mike sees the benefit of Horbiger's upgrade proposal and installs the new parts in the next planned maintenance. Two years later, Mike checks this unit and recognizes that it is still running and hasn't had a failure for over 16,000 hours. Do you want to follow Mike and become part of the Vistra experience? Visit vistra.horbiger.com. Quite interesting, huh? Because it's give full transparency for the fill process. Full process you have since you start the compressor maintenance till your field mechanic go to the stores and pick the right part with the scanner, with the app, and he can scan the right part so he can be 100% sure he have the right part to install in this position. As example, suction valve through one head end. So he makes sure that this is the right component. He install it and he finish the compressor maintenance in the system. So, looking at to that, we have three main benefits we can get from Vistra. Maximizing the uptime for our machine, shorten the repair times, and reduce cost, operating cost. How we do that, the three main targets? We have four areas we can do that from. Through the tracking each and repair and understand the failure trends, because each time you Start a compressor. Hello? It's recorded in the system. So each time you start a compressor maintenance, the system will record or register this compressor maintenance. You change the valve at that time. After 3,000 hours, after 4,000 hours, you will make a compressor maintenance again. So the system will record that. If it's repeated frequently, non average, it can be highlighted as a bad actor. 
So you can contact Horbiger representative, and the Horbiger representative will look into that this data and come up with a solution. Maybe we need a valve upgrade. Maybe the process change. Maybe we need to design something else. So this is what you can get by following the digitized smart component. Bad actors we talk about, smart inventory. We know that inventory is a little bit challenge, that we need to keep accurate inventory levels. We need, don't need to be overstock or understock. We need the critical parts to be exactly as we need, when we need it in the store. We need to get it. We need to use it. We don't need to, uh, we need to avoid any circumstances that we have a, a failure and I don't have the required critical parts that I need. By using Vistra, you can have a control of your inventory because everything is serialized. Everything is digital. The second area is when you send the parts to the Horbiger workshop, mostly what we do at the standard without Vistra is we send the inspection reports to the customer. Once we do the inspection reports, the initial inspection, we send to the customer, we get the scope of work that we will do, recommended scope of work, and then we get customer approval, and then we start do the repair. By Vistra, everything, you will find it in the system. You don't need to call anyone. Once we finish the inspection, you will find the inspection report recorded in the system. You can have instant look at this, at this report, and you can get an approval to proceed with the repair. So Vistra is available in two forms. It's available in a web portal, and it's available in an app, iOS and Android. Based on the role access based, we have a maintenance supervisor. Let's take an example. And we have a field mechanic. Maintenance supervisor can have access to the web portal, so he can start the compressor maintenance. He can have his dashboard. He can see all the maintenance history that has done in this tag. He can see all the uh, equipment that's in operation right now, how much he has in inventory, everything. Everything he can find in his dashboard. So this is the web portal interface. The second interface is the application. The application can be used by the field mechanic. The field mechanic can go to the store, scan the part that he needed, install it in the compressor, click finish to finish the maintenance event that the maintenance supervisor created. So what we can have else is you have your OR maintenance records at one place. Is it only for our bigger items? No. It can be for all the compressor items that we, you have. Even if it's not our bigger item, we can import that to the system. So you can have the full use of the system, not only for the valves, rings, and packing, but we can have the crosshead, connecting rod, any capital parts, we can import it as well to the system. Serialization. We explain the full cycle. You will have a full transparency for that. Once you have the components in the units, it's now you start the maintenance. You take out the components. You send it in transit to Horbiger Workshop. Horbiger Workshop do the repair. It's in transit from the workshop to your stores. You can have full transparency for this process. You can see it in the system on spot. So how the customer journey can be look like when you start using Vistra. When you start using the Vistra, you can, as we ex explained, you have the transparency for using the serialization feature. Once the uh, maintenance supervisor use the system and create e maintenance events, he can track the parts and repair, and you have transparency of the delivery and every aspects of this process. And as we explain as well, the bad actors. Once we see the unfrequent, no, above average maintenance records, maintenance events one has done in any compressor, we can identify this as a bad actor, and we can create an upgrade recommendation for what's need to be done. By that, we finish with Vistra. Please, for a demo request, you can contact our local Horbiger Turkey team here. We can arrange a detailed presentation. We can come at your stores. We can discuss at any fine details you want to add. We are openly for a demo and pilot also as well for Vistra. Second product, uh, the Predecom. Predecom is a smart prediction failure system. It can target, fill the gap between the online monitoring that already exists in the market and any connected work 
data stream software like the Vistra. Because what we have in the online monitoring now in the, in the market, it can give you, feed you with a lot of graphs, vibration trends, pressures, um, high temperature, high pressure alerts, can give you all of that. But we think about it. What the customer can do with this? He needs someone to interpret this to actionable actions. Like, what? A, okay, I know that there is a high temperature in, in suction valve, so what I need to do? This, this does not exist. What we come up with is we can feed you insights, accurate insights about your system. So it's a combination between online monitoring and digital data streams feed from maintenance record, historians, all your data inside Hello. inside your maintenance department, we can have it and feed it to our machine learning models to give you accurate insights. How the system works is very simple. So we have two sources of data. We have Horbiger data and we have customer data. Data push from Horbiger data from Vistra from the compressor configuration, our internal compressor configuration at Horbiger. From the repair and service analytics, this is the software we use to repair the parts, valves, as example. From the food failure root cause library and recommendation, we have a full library for standard root cause analysis. What could be the reasons? Maybe it's not the reason, but it will give you a list of what could be the reasons for this failure. So those data streams come to the data, data interface and then feeding the Predicom core. The Predicom core, we have the digital compressor to win. We have the data analytics machine learning. We have the component anomaly failure detection and the data platform. The core will push it to the Predicom engine. Predicom engine will make it to a cloud website so you can have a sign-in email and password. Very easy, very accessible. It's very user intuitive, not so complicated. I will not feed you with the graphs. I will give you very accurate insights that can be used and be useful in avoiding unplanned shutdown. So how it can be started? Once the system is detecting any failure, it will send you an email, send you a notification. Maybe an email, maybe an SMS can be configured, but this is what you can get. Severity level, the unit tag, the components, where is it, exactly where is it, the probability for the failure, the last date that you need to start the maintenance to check that, to eliminate this maybe predicted failure. Once you have that, there is a link. You can click the link, and it can give you the, lead you to the landing page of the tag, the compressor tag. You can see a heat map, simple heat map, for your compressors. You can see some information in the heat map, you can see the failure running hours, mean time between failures, hours since last failures. It can see all the aspects of this specific tag. And it can give you two failure prediction probability. What the information it can be finding here, the probability, the component position, and the time to reach the failure level. Once you click any of those, the failure prediction, this is what we're talking about. It will give you full insights, what is that, what we expect that that happened. It will give you the failure road cause analysis and prediction evidence, why we think this has happened. I will not give you only the, uh, the cause analysis, but I will give you the prediction evidence. As example, for this example as well, it's a high impact velocity due to oil extraction, 60% likely road cause, excessive unloading without adjusting loop rates, loading to oil accumulation in the cylinders. If this is the reason, maybe it's the reason, but it's 60%, this is, this is the reason. How it's feel, we can have a detailed presentation on that, and we are very open to explain that. So it will give you the picture, how it looks like. Maybe you can look at your valve. I, maybe it's the similar, similar symptoms that you can see. So maybe the, this is life. And you have access, and we have access. So if we feel something needs to be more represented, some more clarification, we can interfere, and we can have a discussion on that. The suggestions, what solutions can be done to avoid this. You can upgrade the valves, upgrade the lubrication system because there is a stickness. We can upgrade the compressor capacity control. Coming to the second section is the prediction evidence. The prediction evidence will give you why we think that this has happened. Insights from BV diagrams, from Vista Analytics, we have a little bit 
full library of data streams. You can get the evidence from the Vista analytics, from the VV diagrams, from the vibration trends, and from the service analytics. These are feeding our system with information, with continuous data. We are doing a field trials right now. Please contact our Turkey local team. We can arrange a detailed presentation for you, for your specific fleet. And we can uh, agree and discuss on the recommended tag for the pilot, pilot, pilot trials. It's a very simple process. Please reach, uh, reach to us if you need any clarification on that. By that, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Abdul. Next presentation is by Christian on emission control. Good. You're also a warm welcome from my side. It's a pleasure to meet all of you here and to get the chance to touch a very, very important topic. And that is about the safety, uh, operational safety and emission. I'm sure there are some of you in the audience here who have already experienced a beep, beep, beep in a refinery. And that's quite, that's quite a challenge actually when you hear this and your gas sniffer detects gas in a refinery. Because that shows you that there is gas actually surrounding you and that can harm actually your health or create an explosive atmosphere. So therefore, we decided actually to introduce a new series of perch panels to overcome these issues for you. Um, we call the new perch panel series ECP and it stands for Emission Control uh, Panel. But why do we need those perch panels and what is the, uh, the working principle behind this? To understand it, let's have a first quick view on where these leakages are coming from. And the main source of those leakages is caused by the packing case. The packing case is actually there to seal the piston rod uh, going through the cylinder and sealing the compression chamber. And those sealing rings are unfortunately not 100% gas tight. To collect the leakage across those rings, every packing case is connected to a vent line so that you convey the vent gas actually to a safe location or to flare. But the same leakage actually which occurs through the standard ceiling rings is also occurring here at the end of the packing case and that causes a direct leakage into the distance piece of your compressor. And this is a, a, a safety risk and you all see that this is a real risk but because every compressor has installed explosion relief valves on the crankcase housings. They are there for a specific reason and this is it because you cannot control that process gas is not leaking into the compression or into the distance pieces and the crankcase housing if you do not apply a purge panel. Please also be aware there are secondary leakages uh, actually going through the packing cups uh, or gaskets of the case and those leakages are directly flowing into the distance pieces. That is your second source of gas going into the compressor. So how to overcome that issue now? We have therefore a product, the perch panel, the ECP, uh, to avoid those secondary leakages. And the working principle is very simple. You apply a nitrogen barrier into your packing case to completely block any gas of going through that uh, packing case. So a very, very simple approach. Uh, you just have to ensure that your purge gas pressure, here showed in green, is on a higher level than your vent gas pressure. And that actually is the reason why all of your compressors in process gas or chemical applications do have two distance pieces, right? The only, if, if we would not see that leakages, you would have compressors actually where the cylinder is directly attached to the crankcase housing. Um, and as you can imagine, this adds also a lot of cost to your compressor, those distance pieces, but they really have to be there to ensure this operational safety. 
Um, in the API 618, unfortunately, there are no good standards defined on how to design and apply such purge systems. Therefore, we have now developed our own approach, also in the general uh, section of API compliant, uh, where we actually simplify the approach and ensure that those leakages are not going. And on top of the product, you will also receive services to ensure that everything is designed properly and correct to the, to the latest and greatest design. Similar approach can be taken to a single compartment distance piece. There, it's even more important to apply purge systems because the risk that process gas leaks into your crankcase housing and then to the environment is even higher. Typically, when you talk to customers, it feels a little bit like headache on getting purge panels installed. Why? Because there is no standard in place. So every time you want to install such a purge panel, this is a project for you. And you customize it actually for every single machine. So this is a very lengthy, but also a very costly approach. And we have overcome this now for you by applying a standardized and modularized approach. We have predefined packages for you to cover your needs, uh, and you basically have to only select now the right model. We just need very, very basic information from you, like the number of packing cases and stages and cylinders, and then actually you can, you can pre-pick a model. We have decided to provide you with three different models. Uh, when we look to the left, the, the orange colored one, the ECPC, C stands for constant pressure, so that is the most simple and most cost-effective solution for you to apply a purge, uh, and you basically set the purge pressure manually. So you set it once by understanding what is the maximum of your purge pressure, uh, vent pressure line, and then you set it manually, okay? There is a more advanced solution, the ECPV. V stands for variable pressure. Variable pressure means we are having a sensing line introduced into the system and the case where we are sensing the vent pressure at the packing case and then automatically regulate the purge pressure. Why is this important for you? This reduces the need for purge gas, nitrogen. So that reduces your nitrogen consumption and you basically save a lot of operational costs by applying this. And then, last but not least, we have the ECPI. I stands here for intelligent. Here we actually sensing the pressure for each single packing case. So this, uh, this model is typically applied for very critical, critical compressors where you want to understand the performance of every single packing case and you get directly feedback. In case of a failure of a packing case, you can immediately uh, nail down the problem and fix the, fix the right packing case. All of these um, panels are uh, done with uh, switch lock components. We are fully API 618 compliant. There is also a provision for digital instruments. So there are no digital instruments uh, with the standard supply, but on the back of the panel, you can additionally apply digital instruments to get pressure levels and feedback into your control loop integrated. We also are capable of providing those panels for sour gas then we would deliver all these panels in an enclosed chamber, uh, and that is also part of our standard supply. Uh, here you can see the features once again at the, at the glance. So we really save uh, your workforce um, and the plant actually from uncontrolled leakages. Um, everything is ATEX compliant. You have the capability to really operate the panel with the maximum efficiency by automatically setting the purge pressure. You could also apply a single packing case monitoring to really get the feedback uh, directly from the case. You have a protection, of course, from overpressurize. You can digitalize the full panel to get all the feedback in your control room. H2S compliant, and we really ensure the highest quality of components by partnering with Swatchlock. That brings me to the end of my presentation, and as a quick summary, we would also like to share with you uh, a video around the ECP panel.
Jordan. In case there are any questions, we will also uh, be there available for, for, for your questions at the booth then later on. We will now break for lunch and we will meet at uh, 12.45. So lunch is at the reception uh, of the office. So please use the signages to enter the lunch area. Thank you.